So you're doing all your research into starting your first aquarium and you've come to the point where it's time to decide what you're gonna put on the bottom of your aquarium to make it look a little better. It's time to select a substrate. In this video, we're gonna go through the ins and outs of aquarium substrates and hopefully help you make your decision on which one you're gonna put in your tank. So let's get started. In the last video in this series, we started off with talking about fish tank basics, the absolute bare bone information that you're gonna need to start up your first aquarium. If you didn't get a chance to see that yet, I'll put a card up here for it. Definitely check that out and then come back and watch this one because this is the next step in the process. Today's video is all about substrates, the stuff that you put on the floor of your aquarium. This might sound like a simple decision, just get whatever looks best, but there's a lot more to it than that because different materials have a different effect on the water. Let's start off with the simplest of all substrates, and that's no substrate at all. You might be thinking an aquarium with no substrate at all would be the easiest to take care of. And you'd be right, Kind of. It's easier to take care of because you don't have to vacuum it out when you're doing your maintenance, but there's a couple downsides to bare bottom tanks. The first is algae. Algae is gonna grow in your tank at some point. Even the most meticulous fish keepers are gonna get algae from time to time. Some would even say it's a sign of a healthy aquarium. You'd be surprised how well substrate will cover up algae on the bottom of the tank. And that's a good thing because it looks pretty bad. Next is fish poop. Yes, your fish is gonna poop and it's gonna go somewhere. It doesn't always make it into the filter. Substrate does a great job at letting the poop fall down between it and get lost out of sight. This would be why when you see people vacuum out their substrate, all that nasty brown stuff comes up through the tube. So if it's such a hassle, why would people not have substrate at all? Well, it's a preference thing. A lot of times when you see bare bottom tanks, it's when someone has a bunch of tanks like a fish farm and it would just cost a fortune to put it in all of them, but others like me will sometimes have a bare bottom tank just to give it that contemporary look. John's 360 gallon tank that you see behind him, it doesn't have any substrate in it, but to be honest, I'm pretty sure when he moves it down to the basement, he's gonna add some substrate in it. Those fish, they have giant poops. But anyways, let's move on and talk about gravel. Gravel is without a doubt the most common aquarium substrate in the hobby. It's easy to find, easy to maintain, pretty cheap, and it looks really good. A lot of people, when they think about gravel in an aquarium, they automatically think about some kind of neon blue or bright pink colored gravel but it doesn't have to be that way. Gravel comes in a bunch of different colors and sizes, from the larger natural colored that looks like river rocks to the smaller gravel chips that might not look as natural but have a really good look nonetheless. Gravel is great for countering the issues that Lisa talked about in the last segment, things like algae accumulating on the bottom or fish poop settling down to the bottom, but there's something else that it's really good at, and that's providing surface area for the growth of beneficial bacteria. Like we touched on in the last video in this series, there's bacteria that grows in your aquarium that helps maintain a healthy environment for your fish. This bacteria grows on surfaces, so the more surface area you have in your aquarium, the more opportunity there is for growth of this bacteria. Just look at all those tiny edges and nooks and crannies that gravel has. These are all prime areas for beneficial bacteria to grow. So gravel looks good. It's great for hiding things like algae and fish poop and all of that. It's great for growing beneficial bacteria. It's the perfect substrate, right? Well, hold on a second, because there's another one that's just as good, if not better, and that's sand. Let me take a minute to tell you about this week's video sponsor, Surfshark. It was only a couple of months ago that a big YouTube channel in our community was hacked and almost lost everything he'd worked hard for years to build. Ever since then, I've been looking into as many ways possible to be safe and secure online. Enter Surfshark. 
Surfshark is a VPN that helps you do everything you do online safely and securely by encrypting your data. Surfshark can be installed easily on every device you have and give you that confidence that you'll be safe and secure. They have some amazing features like blind search, which is basically an incognito search on steroids, and hacklock, which can scan your email and look for anything suspicious and notify you if something pops up. Oh, by the way, that YouTuber that was hacked? Yeah, that was through email. There's also the thing that everyone talks about when it comes to VPNs, and that's the fact that you can bypass different countries' restrictions on internet use and connect to servers all over the world, which is good if you're traveling and you can't wait to watch the next episode of Tiger King. Check out the link to Surfshark in the description below, and if you decide you want to play it safe and secure your connection, enter KG Tropicals at checkout to receive an 85% discount on an already ridiculously low rate, and get three additional months for free. Thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this, now let's get back to the video. Sand is a substrate that fish keepers either love or hate. There's no doubt that it's the most natural looking substrate, but it's definitely got its pros and cons. So let's go over each one. First, let's start with the pros. As I just said, sand is the most natural looking substrate in the hobby. If nature is your thing and you're trying to make your aquarium look like a little piece of nature, this is definitely the way you're gonna wanna go. Sand is also an amazing biomedia because it has all that surface area. I've heard from many different sources that sand has the most surface area of anything else in the hobby, so it's even better than gravel in that regard. There's also several different types of sand. There's crushed coral, which will help to buffer your water and raise the pH, which is great for certain types of fish, but there's also some super cheap sand that you can buy at Walmart. Pool filter sand is a commonly used sand in the aquarium hobby. This is the kind of sand that they actually make to put into a filter that will filter your pool. But we use it in aquariums because it looks very natural and it's dirt cheap. You can get a 40 pound bag of this sand for like eight bucks at Walmart. That's what I have in this 240 right here. But of course there's pros and cons to everything. So let's talk about the downside of sand. First is the fact that some sand has very fine granules that can get blown around in your tank. That's not a really big deal unless it gets blown into the intake of your filter. If sand gets into the impeller of your filter, it can absolutely ruin it. Next is maintenance. Sand can be a little tricky to maintain because it's so fine and can easily get sucked up into your siphon hose while you're doing water changes. I know it's not the end of the world, but it happens. So sand isn't perfect, but it's close. You can get a super natural look and in most cases get it super cheap. So it's pretty much as close to perfect as you're gonna get. But would you believe me if I told you there's something that looks even more natural than sand? Well, it's true. And that's the substrate that's made specifically for planted aquariums. There's quite a few specialty planet tank substrates available today. These aren't really for the new fish keeper, so I take caution if you're thinking about putting it in your first tank. But hey, we gotta cover it all in this video. Planet tanks have exploded in popularity in the last few years thanks to websites like AquariumCoop.com that specialize in all things planet aquariums. When you set up a planet aquarium, you have the opportunity to make an incredible little aquascape and mimic nature in almost any way you want. With this rise in popularity, there's been a ton of manufacturers making specialty products that are specifically for maintaining healthy plants. And that starts with the substrate. These substrates are basically dirt and they're packed with all kinds of nutrients and minerals that help the aquascape look natural and also help the plants to thrive. But just like sand, these type of substrates come with challenges. They can be difficult in the beginning if you're not careful filling it up, and they can be tricky to maintain because the material is so light. But again, it's the most natural look you can get. But there's one more option out there that we really shouldn't talk about, but let's go.
Yes, it's true, there are fish keepers out there that literally put dirt into their aquariums. And yes, it's dirt that they go out and get from their yard. It's not really my thing, but there's people doing it. I didn't want to even have this one on the list because it's really something for the advanced fish keeper that's a little crazy, but you know, this is YouTube. If I didn't include it on the list, there would be comments saying you forgot all about dirted tanks. But now there's gonna be comments saying, well, I have a dirted tank and I'm not crazy. How dare you? I love the internet. Anyway, yes, dirted tanks are really a thing, but like I said, they are more for the advanced fish keeper. So I don't wanna waste a whole lot more time talking about this. This is supposed to be for beginners. When it comes time to make your decision on what substrate to get and you're a beginner, then the decision should be pretty easy. You should want a substrate that looks nice while also being very easy to install and maintain. I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait a minute, Lisa, aren't they all easy to install? Just wait a minute, have you been listening? Gravel and pool filter sand are super easy because you're basically gonna rinse them off and dump them in, but when you're wanting to install some of the specialty sands or planet tank substrates, it's a whole different story. These substrates have a whole bunch of different things in them that you don't want to wash off. If you do, it pretty much defeats the purpose. With these types of substrates, you don't rinse them, you just put them in and very carefully fill the tank up. Most people will lay paper towels or a paper plate down and slowly trickle the water in. You gotta be patient with this. If you don't, your tank is gonna look like one huge mud puddle. Trust me, I'm going through it right now. So when it comes to ease of installation, gravel and pool filter sand will be the easiest by far. But again, that's not the only factor here. As I said earlier, you also want your substrate to be easy to maintain. And when it comes to maintenance, none of them are easier than your standard aquarium gravel. So the moment of truth. You want my advice on what substrate I believe that you should put into your first aquarium. Well, if you've been listening at all throughout this video, shouldn't be too hard for you to figure out which one I'm gonna say. You want it to be easy to install. You want it to look good and be easy to maintain. Well, what checks all of those boxes? Gravel. So I'm gonna recommend to you for your first aquarium, go out and get some aquarium gravel. Make your life easier. It can be the large gravel or the smaller gravel. Both of them will be just as easy. I realize there's gonna be a lot of seasoned aquarium veterans that are gonna say, boo, but I understand where they're coming from. I wanna help new fish keepers with the easiest way of doing things. And you can't really argue that there's no easier substrate than gravel. Now I'm not saying that a new fish keeper would find it impossible to use these other substrates. I mean, we're not talking about rocket science here, but again, in an effort to keep things absolutely as simple as possible, we're gonna recommend gravel. Now here's the thing. I'm not arrogant enough to think that this is the only video you've watched about substrate. More than likely, you've watched a few before this, or you plan on watching a few after. That's a good thing, because you should. When you watch other videos, you're gonna get a ton of information, and it might get a bit overwhelming. I'm not saying the information is bad, and I'm not saying don't listen to them. All I'm saying is it might get a bit overwhelming. You need this one if you're gonna keep cichlids, you need this one if you're gonna keep plants, and this one buffers the water. It's just a lot. Just understand that there's no rule book that says you have to use a certain substrate unless you're going to set up some advanced planted tank or you're trying to breed a certain type of fish. So if you're setting up your first tank, put in a substrate that you like, something that's easy for you to install and easy for you to maintain. That's it. I hope this video has helped you out in your fish keeping journey. If it has and you want to see more videos from us, you can click right here to subscribe to the channel. It's free. Why not do it? And if you want to see last week's video, that's going to be right here. And right here is going to be a video that YouTube thinks you're going to want to see. Thank you so much for watching. And until we meet again, let's do our part to help keep fish keepers fish keeping. <laughs>